Hello, my name is Trevor Tai, and thank you for joining me for my MVP day session on FreeNAS and Hyper-V, running hypervisors for SMBs that won't break the bank. As you know, uh, working in a smaller environment, a small business, nonprofit, trying to find ways to save money and try to keep up with the uh, latest trends and best practices and I hope you'll find my session useful. I've been using FreeNAS now for coming up on about eight years. I started using it back when it just came out in uh, version 8. They're currently up to version 11. Uh, and we're using it in the organization I work at, the Santa Barbara Public Library, uh, for our production storage for our hypervisors in our cluster environment and uh, they've worked out extremely well they weren't expensive as compared to uh, like a Synology or uh, a nimble storage solution which was just bought by HP about a year ago you know we got a mix of uh, all flash and uh, regular drives and I hope to uh, show you uh, why you would want to use Hyperfree and VNAS for uh, your environment for running virtualized uh, systems. So this is my home lab here. I have uh, my NAS up here. Um, when using uh, Hyper-V with uh, FreeNAS, I typically like to use uh, device extents, uh, iSCSI targets. Uh, they work extremely well. Uh, you can use file extent. Uh, they tend to be uh, faster on the read and right to start I found over time the file extent does get slower as compared to the device extent that's my personal experience um, you know when you just go right off the start 100% for sure file extent uh, is uh, what is typically recommended and does seem faster but like I said over time uh, my experience is that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, so, what I have here is my free NAS here. Uh, so, in the storage for creating a device extent, uh, you select your storage, and it's typically recommended to run below 80%. I'm kind of pushing it here. For our Hyper-V environment, uh, you have two options. You can create a file extent for your iSCSI target, which is basically a file on your FreeNAS, which you can share out using uh, iSCSI. You can also see it using Samba, etc. It's stored on the FreeNAS server. I prefer to use the device extent. I found it more reliable and I found that with the file extent, my personal experience is that it gets slower over time as the device extent tends to keep uh, its uh, speed. Uh, so to create a device extent, you want to select your data set. Mine's called option key NAS. Go create Z volume. You give it a name, a comment, a size. Uh, in this case, I only did 120 gigabytes. Reason is that my home server NAS is uh, running above 80%, and it is recommended that you keep it below 80%. Uh, you can add compression. Uh, deduplication so when I typically create this I set up a inherent sync and I just use the LZ4 compression doesn't take anything 
uh, on the uh, Zedval uh, for the Hyper-V to the iSCSI target. Uh, if you set it to nothing, there's no noticeable uh, performance difference. You're more limited by your network than anything. So I had created my Z, uh, my Zvol here MVP, and I can edit the options here. You can see I have 120 gig. I can force the size to consume more than 80 percent. Um, I can change compression levels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So here. I'm just going to do a short little uh, demonstration for you. I have Crystal Mark here installed. You can see I have my storage up here. And I have it selected. We're just going to do a quick one gig write. Just demonstrating uh, now this is all on one gigabit infrastructure uh, and they aren't overly great switches uh, you know they're good enough for my lab environment you can see even uh, just in my lab environment here I'm getting 120 megabytes per second read uh, which is great. So we're not going to be hurting or anything uh, for our uh, NAS here. And my NAS here, free NAS, it's recommended that you set up your NAS. Here we'll just show the this. I have, you should keep it to less than 13 discs, I have 10, and I have two solid state drives. I have a 40 and a 120 gig. Um, and these are uh, caches. I got a Zvol cache and a L2 Arc cache. So we'll just go to the reporting network. Here we want the iSCSI target. So here's our read and write for our little test we're running here. Got a nice little graph. And you can see the arc hits. And that's when it goes out of RAM. Here. And you can see uh, we're hitting the arc ratio. It's going out of the RAM and hitting the SSD. And we're getting over 100 meg here on our SCSI target. You can also see uh, where it's hitting the disk. So for your virtual machines here, it'd be you can have a bunch of redundancy set up. Uh, in this case, it's recommended to use mirrored drives. So you can see here, this is how my NAS is set up. I have a two caches set up one here the log cache now it's debatable whether or not the log cache is uh, usable I decided to go with it um, an issue with this is that I really should typically have two because if I were to lose uh, my log volume uh, I could theoretically lose data. Uh, the cache drive, not so much, more for read only. Uh, this is L2 arc cache. Uh, 
it's a uh, single disk and that again should be mirrored and here's where the majority of the data is mirrored i have several drives here set up in a mirror configuration a mirror configuration is recommended for use in virtualized environments uh, and then if you wanted to expand your NAS storage, uh, you need to replace the two drives on the mirror. Uh, right now, I have a variety of different size drives. So you can see I have 5.1 terabytes used to 1.2 terabytes available. My ZVOL is 5.2. terabytes less than a gig available and that is because of this MVP device extend so if I go into my storage view disks uh, you can see here I have four two terabyte drives and I have four one and a half terabyte drives I have a 40 gigabyte SSD and a 120 gigabyte SSD. This DA0 is a flash drive, a USB flash drive, which hosts the operating system for FreeNAS. So that, and these are set up in mirrored, so which is why you need to replace the two drives with two of a uh, similar size. You don't have to have the same size for uh, using the drives together in the ZVOL setup, which is uh, quite convenient. So I could get two four terabyte drives and replace these two one and a half terabytes, and then my RAID array would expand, which would be very helpful. And our crystal mark here, you can see it's finished, and I've had some pretty good benchmarks here in the sequential 4k uh, that on the one gig uh, we are using a very similar setup in the production environment so this is uh, the cluster environment that is set up Hyper-V and FreeNAS um, so I have the FreeNAS environment uh, has four, there are two servers with four SSDs each, and those are set up in a Zedfall mirror configuration. And then I have uh, six 7200 RPM, uh, enterprise level drives in a ZVOL setup uh, and both the uh, systems have a minimum of well one has 78 gigs of RAM the other has 32 gigs of RAM uh, they're both have uh, lagged interfaces with Intel i uh, Intel dual i350 NICs and they are bonded LACP uh, to switches and uh, that is what is running about running 20 virtual machines we go to the roles so we have several servers running on a cluster environment and we can fail them over easy enough uh, let's just we can do a live migration uh, we can switch here let's do this one here 
So we can move it to a specific node. And we'll do it really quickly. And if we had the web GUI interface for the free NAS open, we could uh, see what's going on uh, with the drives. And that's it. We're done. Live migration. Uh, performance is pretty good. Uh, we have about 100 staff that are accessing the servers. Uh, most of the servers are the applications are being used by staff for remote desktop, other applications that are required, such as security systems, etc., etc. Most of these servers are just staff based servers. We use 20 of them, uh, and we have still room for extent expandability. We have a bit of an issue with um, processor, processing power at the moment. Uh, as we're starting to reach the limit where the processor is going to be uh, starting to become a factor. So we would need to add additional servers to the cluster. In our node setup here, we have seven nodes. Using FreeNAS as our storage target has been not only a cost savings, but it has helped us expand our services in ways we couldn't have imagined. Uh, prior to going the virtualized cluster method, uh, we used to purchase uh, actual tower for every single machine that we put up on the network. Uh, now we just spin up a virtual machine. It's not become an issue. Uh, everything's been rock solid, and picking free NAS has been a really good solution for us. Uh, we've been able to reuse uh, older server hardware, which had lots of RAM, uh, which free NAS requires uh, for creating our virtualized infrastructure. Uh, since we don't need to go out and buy uh, Synology or anything like that, uh, purchase some enterprise level solid state drives, enterprise level spinning disks, which uh, we've done in the past for a couple other servers from uh, vendors uh, where we are required to, we're required to purchase hardware. Uh, and reusing those uh, type of machines, upgrading them a little bit, adding more RAM has been uh, great. Uh, we have our FreeNAS server running on a dual quad core uh, 2.2 gigahertz processor with 78 gigs of RAM. It's been rock solid, uh, no performance issues. After all, it's over glorified. Hard drive essentially uh, saved our organization a ton of money. It's increased our efficiency, our redundancy, and our capabilities. I hope you found this session informative, and I hope the next time, or if you're just starting out into the virtualization field for your organization, that you have a good solid look at FreeNAS and using Hyper-V for your infrastructure. Uh, if, you need, if you'd like to get a hold of me, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Trevor Ty, LinkedIn.com slash Trevor Ty, and my email address, Trevor Ty at optionkey.ca. Uh, thank you for your time.